Geomorphologists assemble. Someone has made a game for us. Have you ever wanted to raise solid rock out of the oceans and then to watch that rock erode and disintegrate over millennia into dust and return back to the ocean it came from? And all the while using video game style interfaces and graphics? Well now you can. This is Terra Firma, a game made by indie solo developer working as intended and it's available to play for free. So join me in this video as I experiment with the game and think of all the fun and useful ways it could be used. I'm a scientist and from the name of this channel you probably won't be surprised to hear my specialism is flooding. More specifically though, my past research has focused on a type of models called Landscape Evolution Models, or LEMs. I've used them to better understand how rivers change over time and the impacts this has on flooding. I have used these models to investigate the impacts of flash flooding in rivers, tidal flooding in estuaries, and the changes in flows of water and sediment from retreating glaciers. But LEMs have more fundamental roots. Models like Child, Siberia, Topo Toolbox LEM and the original Caesar are used to understand how the core processes that shape landscapes change them over very, very long timescales. Because we'll never have observational data that spans hundreds of thousands or even millions of years, we can never check whether these models are doing the right thing. And this has led to criticism of geomorphologists who use these types of models in their research, that they're actually just playing games with models and not actually doing real science. So we probably shouldn't actually be that surprised that someone has made what is essentially a gamified version of a landscape evolution model. This is Terra Firma, a free game that is available on the Steam platform made by indie solo developer working as intended. They have made this wonderful sandbox game where you start by smashing two tectonic plates together to make your landmass like this. And you can play around with the speed and the direction that the two plates approach each other at and you can create lots of different landmasses as a result. So let's go with this one and launch our first sandbox. And you start off with this menu where you get to pick lots of different options like the size of the map I'm going to go with a medium one for now because my computer's pretty old and can't really handle anything bigger. You can also select a climate type. So the default is spring melt where it puts a bit more water in the spring season of each year to represent water melting from glaciers. But you can also have something like monsoon where it puts a lot more water in the summer and less in the other seasons to represent kind of those monsoonal climates. But we're just going to go with the spring melt one for now. You also have options for geology, so you could have igneous rocks or sandstone rocks, presumably with different rates of erosion, or you can have those branded. I'm just going to go with igneous. So as this loads, I just want to be clear that I have absolutely no idea what is going on underneath the hood of this simulation. I've not seen the code, there are no equations published anywhere, so I don't know whether the water flow, the water physics uh, and the erosion equations are actually based on anything from physics or real life, or whether they're just there because it produces something that looks realistic. Now in science and practice we call these types of models black boxes, and they're not good things because, because we can't see the code, we don't know the equations, we don't know what it's doing, we can't peer review it, we can't check it's doing the right thing, we can't quality assure it. But this isn't intended to be used as a model. We're not inferring anything about the real world from it. We're not making decisions off the back of it. It's intended to be played as a game, so the fact it's a black box is not so much of a problem. Now once you've got your sandbox loaded, it will start simulating that landscape change and water flow, and you can use some of the tools to manipulate the landscape. So I'm just gonna add some igneous rock around to create some mountains and some highland to give us some proper kind of high uplands to our river catchments that we're going to create. Now, in reality, landscapes change very, very slowly, but the simulation allows you to speed this up. So there's this menu here, which has different rates of erosion. This tells the simulation how many years worth of erosion it should produce within a year of the simulation. And it's defaulted to 100 years. Now, this isn't literally simulating 100 years of erosion. I'm assuming that what it's doing is just adding a multiplier to the equations. 
So it'll work out how much erosion happens on the ground and then times it by 100. And you can set this right up to 2000 and that's what we're going to do now. And we'll also press the fast forward button to make it run really nice and quick and see those changes happen rapidly. Now because I raised everything up really, really high very quickly and because that erosion rate is set at 2000 times, erosion is happening really, really fast. And that means the, the rivers are very sediment rich. So once they reach the lowlands, they begin depositing lots and lots of sediment. And you can see this with these brown areas around the rivers. Because they're so sediment rich and they are depositing that sediment so quickly, the rivers are constantly in flux and they're constantly changing around. Now over time, as that sediment supply begins to run out, the rivers will begin to stabilize. They won't have as much sediment to deposit they will start to form um, stable channels and begin to form meandering rivers. We can zoom in and we can see that the dev has added some graphics to the stable land. So in areas which haven't been eroded or had anything deposited on them in a while, they begin to grow grass. And as time goes by, they begin to grow trees as well. But this landscape isn't very interesting. So let's start again with a new one. So what I want to try and recreate is the type of landscape evolution that you'll see on a volcanic island chain. So think Hawaii or the Canaries. These are formed when tectonic plates move over mantle plumes, which are full of magma. And they create volcanoes and those volcanoes build islands. So as the tectonic plate moves, the island moves away from the plume, the volcanic activity stops and that long process of erosion and degradation begins. Now in the main part of the Hawaiian chain, the youngest and the largest island is the Hawaiian Big Island, which began to form 400,000 years ago and is still growing. It is big and it is mountainous. The oldest island is Ni'ihau, which is nearly 5 million years old and is much lower and much flatter than Hawaiian Big Island. So let's just leave this running and see what happens. Now it takes just over 200,000 simulated years to completely disintegrate this landscape. That is much, much faster than the rate of erosion that we see on island chains like Hawaii. Now this tells me that the modeling in terra firma is optimized for an enjoyable and interactive experience rather than ultra realism, which is fine because it's a game. So I have become a little bit addicted to this game I would love to use it with students to help them understand how landscapes change and how we model this. I think it has so much potential in the educational arena. Now I would love to be able to use the same physics engine to make a digital version of a literal real sandbox like the M River mini flumes. You could change the rate of water, you could dump sediment on top, you could scoop sediment out, you could place objects on it like houses like we would when we use these sort of flumes with the public at events. I would also like to see entertainment games embrace this sort of thing too. Imagine a city builder like Timberborn, where you had to be constantly looking out for erosion which might put your buildings at risk, or where floods cause dirt to be deposited on your fields of crops. It would add an extra challenge to the game and make it feel so much more dynamic. The dev is currently working on Terra Firma 2, which looks like it's going to give you a whole lot more control over the simulation and the climate that you apply to it, and put more detail into the landscape, such as animals. It also looks like there'll be tools to export the height map out of Terra Firma and put it into other games like Minecraft, or if you're like me, into an LEM proper. Now I love it when I find a little geoscience gem like this. I am convinced that games and models really are the same thing. They just have different purposes and usefulnesses. And Terra Firma is the sort of simulation that I really, really enjoy because it has a bit of both, yet it's not fully either. But can you really call it a game? And can you actually call it a model? Not really. It's in that really exciting, underexplored space in between. Are there any other games that you think I should check out? Or are there any models that you think would make awesome games? Why don't you drop a comment below and let me know? 
And if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel. But for now, stay dry out there.